Hello people and welcome to episode 24. In this one we shall do some in-depth modding, changing the very foundation of the game and its mechanics, rather than just simply adding new stuff. But that too of course, all the new flashy armors, weapons and a huge quest mods are included as well. A full palette, we're ready to create some art. Since modding is all about changing the game to your liking, it's for the best if we just take full control. The new game configuration menu by ZZYXZZ gives us easy access to all possible game settings through an MCM menu. It's a very convenient way to access all the game parameters and do quick changes whenever you like. Lots of things you can do here, adjust barter, selling and buying options, adjust character attributes and formulas, or for example change settings of DLCs like robot encounters from Automatron, or adjust the values of different difficulty settings, or adjust the experience gain from different activities and so on. The list of available settings is really long and elaborate, check the mod page for more info. And this mod has some updates planned for it too. So there will be even more settings options added in the future. The author even encourages us to post ideas and suggestions. So if you want to have absolute control and on-the-fly accessibility over your game, tracking this one is definitely recommended. Next we have two mods, which go even deeper and take effect even before you enter the actual game. Private Profile Redirector by Kerber. For those of you who watch my Skyrim reviews as well, yes, it is the same mod just for Fallout 4. What it does is, it reduces the loading time at the startup of the game, meaning from the moment you hit the icon on your desktop and till you arrive at the main menu. The effect is being achieved by altering the way the game accesses the INI files. From what I gathered from the comment section and by testing it myself, it usually shaves off around 10 plus seconds of the load of time. Does not sound like much, but considering it happens every time we start the game, it might very well add a bit of extra time to waste in our pathetic lives. And the second mod, SE Plugin Preloader, is actually an add-on for the first mod and won't do anything on its own. What it does is preloading the script's extender plugins before the actual game starts. From what I understand, it will enhance the effectiveness of the first mod and save us even more time. The mod description only concentrates on what it does and not why. I won't lie, I don't fully get the technical stuff behind it, but you know how it is, as long as it works, we don't really care why. This is a Bethesda game after all. And speaking of Bethesda, it's time for the second coming of God. General Todd Howard statue by Juana Mingo. Yes, that was a low-key needless reference, but also because the mighty creator, Todd, the God, Howard, already came to Skyrim to bless us with his otherworldly shine, and now, here in Fallout 4, we shall also receive his blessing. But it seems because worshipping God and stuff is not really a thing in Fallout, he has disguised himself as General Todd Howard here. This mod is available as a replacer for the Minutemen statues, or just as a craftable statues version. That way we can have Todd's our watching eyes on each and every of our settlements. And of course show our devotion and praise the almighty creator. Because no matter if Skyrim or Fallout, he who is almighty shall guide us and protect us and lead us to a better tomorrow. Even if it suspiciously looks like a Mamorpaga, but who are we to judge? While we play, it's good to have something for the ears, we already confirmed that. So here's Swinging Baby by Copper ZZ and Cubox, yet another radio station mod. This one brings 50 new songs of the electric swing genre. Just pure music, no DJs or anything. All the songs have also been edited by adding static and such to make them sound retro like all the other Fallout 4 radio stations. And this is all there is to say about this one. Enjoy your game with some good music to make the world of Fallout dance as it spins. Some people prefer the music of raining shells. Won't argue with that, time for some weapons. 
Panko Jackhammer by Tagtagul, another very angry looking combat shotgun. The textural quality is not that impressive on this one, even though those are 4K textures. There are custom sounds, projectiles and animations, however. Those animations really give a good and balanced feeling, barely any recoil for such a massive weapon. What really stands out are the 9 different ammunition types, different bug and slug shots with different projectile counts and properties. Besides, the customization isn't much impressive. There are 9 receivers, 3 magazines and 3 sides, but from all that only the sides have any visual presentation. Nevertheless, it's a very fun to use weapon and suitable for many combat situations. The next one is a badass handgun, Viper 6610 by scale. Ok, the textures here are a bit more interesting, that's for sure. Zooming in really pays off. The same can be said about the customization on this one. Lots of visually presented parts, including a variety of nice skins, featuring all the factions and more. Take a note on the beautiful decorative engravings. They might give no tactical advantage whatsoever, but they sure look cool. This weapon is very close to the 10mm pistol from the vanilla game, but less ugly and very, very much more badass. A beautiful weapon indeed. And the next one is a rifle, full palette indeed. AR-70 Assault Rifle by Michao. An Italian rifle which uses 556 ammunition. It also uses the animation of the handmade rifle and requires Nuka World. The customization of this one is very juicy without question. Stocks, barrels, magazines and scopes. Each change will be visible on the actual weapon. The only thing that might be bland is the lack of skins. The wear and tear textures might be great and fitting, but the way it is, we are a bit stuck with those different shades of grey, reflecting on the greyness of life itself. Wait, what the fuck did I just say? Well, fortunately, the last weapon mod is something special, something unique, because it's all the way out there, high in the sky. Orbital Strike Cannon by Timmons Bros. This is actually a modification for the Alien Blaster to allow us to call down strikes from an orbital laser, just like Archimedes 2 from Fallout New Vegas. So basically, we just point, pull the trigger and... Yes, things happen really fast with this one, it's a bit hard to see, but it's actually just one single big massive laser beam. The space laser mod I reviewed for Skyrim a while ago had some more interesting animations. Several laser beams joined into one, following by a big badass explosion, Command and Conquer style. But anyway, let's check if the Brotherhood of Steel is ok with alien tech. Well, yeah, somehow the laser is not that strong. It makes sense, since it is somewhat spammable, so it's more like a cool toy rather than a tool of mass destruction. Alright, about the armors, outfits, whatever, just stuff you put on. It's literally on fire this time. I mean literally. Check this out. Cross 2077 by Nero, of course. Well, you know how it is, nothing even needs to be said here. It doesn't get hotter than this. First of all, it's a cross mod, and all cross stuff is awesome. But then it's Cyberpunk 2077, a game literally everybody is waiting for. Well, maybe except those emo people who don't like the fact that it's going to be first person. Yeah, I mean, they are trying something new now, why the hell not? But it doesn't matter anyway, because here in Fallout we can wear it in any person we want. Just kidding. I mean, in any perspective, of course. And as always, everything is customizable. Holographic masks and whatnot, lots of skins with badass glow effects, lots of different themes for the back. Everything can be customized separately. It's simply flawless. Next, something a bit less futuristic. Terra Kina armor by Derbsdale. Let's go back to the medieval style. Well, medieval mixed with fantasy and stuff. I'm not sure what I'm saying, but... But I do know that this hairdo does not go well with this armor. Also, there is an alternative skimpified version, which I won't show you because of reasons. Basically, imagine this black catsuit is gone, and that's it. 
But next is going to be really interesting. Soviet GP5 gas mask by Truly Britsy and Mates. Now this looks like some intense cheeky breaky if donkey is about to go down. And it will, trust me. Lots of awesome skins for those masks are available. And there is also a mask which does not cover the entire head. Or more like allows your hairdo to shine through, kinda. And that's not all, Sukas! Survivalist Armor by G324. The perfect gear to go with those gas masks. Besides, the customization on this one is interesting too. The vanilla modifications plus three different skins. And also light, medium and heavy variations. And this talking action can begin! Okay, that sounded a bit wrong. Okay, that was a very juicy arming and gearing session, but the quest mods this time might completely blow us away. Let's give it a try. Project Valkyrie by Thuggy Smurf, Sipsidian and 4 Meadow 7 to 1. This is actually an add-on to the really huge quest mod Outcasts and Remnants, which is really DLC size big and offers lots of additions to the vanilla game. But for now, let's concentrate on Project Valkyrie. This mod promises 4 fully voice companions, 20 quests and alternate endings for the vanilla game. Fortunately, it can be started no matter at which point you are in the vanilla game and also without playing through Outcasts and Remnants. To start Project Valkyrie, we go to the Cabot house and check out a terminal. With the new found information, we then go to the asylum and make a very interesting discovery. Hey, I'm on your side. I just need you to tell me the truth. Fine, I'll tell you. But don't say I didn't warn you. My name is Valkyrie. I was kidnapped in the year 2075 and brought here to serve as Jack Cabot's guinea pig. Jack's team ran horrible experiments on me for over two years. And then a nuclear war broke out and this place was abandoned. I've been locked in a cell ever since. Yeah, she is over 200 years old, just like the sole survivor, and also kinda naked when we find her, but awfully positive and talkative. So next we free her and help her escape the asylum. There is some information on the terminal and she will also answer questions, but if you played through the Cabot questline already, it's really not hard to guess how the hell she was able to survive 200 years. Thanks for helping me out there. I owe you one. Here, this is for you. Might be more where that came from if you play your cards right. Anyway, she obviously becomes a follower at this point and also has much more quests at the ready. Let me know if there's anything I can do to help you. There's something personal I could use your help with. You see, when I arrived at Parsons in 2075, it wasn't because I was crazy. Someone kidnapped me and brought me there, but I'm fuzzy on the details. For my own sanity, I need to know who took me and why. It's really impressive how well the dialogues are made and how seamless the player character's voice lines are cut together. And so we embark on a really long journey across several medical facilities of the Commonwealth to learn more about Valkyrie's past. But in the end, this is all what this first quest is about. Let me know if there's anything I can do to help you. If you don't mind, I'd like to head back to my old apartment and see what's left of it. I realize it's a long shot, but there are some personal effects I'd like to pick up. And also my old military gear. On the off chance it's still there. This second quest is a bit more straightforward. Simply go to her place, grab the stuff and give it to her. No pun intended. But of course, the story continues. I think I have something that belongs to you. Yes, that's it. Thank you so much. Hey, there's one more thing. Obviously someone was here after I was abducted, because everything has been moved around. But the place isn't looted, so I'm guessing it was my old roommate Vanessa. Okay, I have the suspicion this might turn into a harem mod, uh, but what I'm trying to say, this time we go to an old military facility and after fighting our way through it, we find something slightly different than expected. Detecting subject. Scanning. Accessing pre-war records. This area Record found. 108th Infantry Regiment. Impressive. 2nd Battalion. Status. Retired. But unfortunately, this is it for this episode. I actually wanted to keep playing until something more interesting happens, but this quest line is just so freaking long. The robot alone had like a million dialogue lines, and considering that it casually gives us the control override codes for Liberty Prime, 
I assume that something damn interesting is surely going to happen. But my life is just so fucked right now, I just don't have the time for this. Even less than usual. I mean, it's already clear as day that this is a high quality quest mod anyway. So fuck it, I sacrifice enough sleep for my videos as it is already. The links to all mods are as always in the description below. Don't forget to endorse the mods you like. And if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and subscribe for more. Thank you all for watching and see you around.